My cousin and his wife just had their first child, so I took this as a good opportunity for me to sneak in a little woodworking project. I don't use the lathe quite as much as I'd like to, it's something I only kind of tend to use every now and again, but one project that I've really wanted to have a go at on the lathe is something involving captive rings, and I thought with a new baby in the family, a wooden rattle would be a great little present and a perfect opportunity for me to give them a go. I started off by cutting down a couple of blanks from a slab of beach that I had in the workshop. I made three blanks in total because I figured this project was either going to go perfectly and I'd want to make more of the rattles, or it was going to go horribly wrong and I'd need some backups. Once I'd got the centres marked out on the first blank, I got it mounted on the lathe and began turning it down so that the block was a cylinder. I didn't want to lose too much in diameter at this point because I wanted to keep the ends as large as possible just to kind of guard against any potential choking hazards that this rattle may present. Once I'd gotten rid of all the flat edges and got a reasonably good cylinder, I began marking out where the rings are going to go. And I used the actual sort of ring tool tip to mark out the thickness of the rings so that I could then start removing the material between where the rings are going to be, which will ultimately give me some space to get the captive ring tool inside those gaps and start carving out the actual rings themselves. So while carving out the excess between the ring locations, I tried not to take out too much material from the inner spindle of the rattle because from the videos that I'd seen of people using a captive ring tool, you end up taking out more of the spindle material as you're cutting the ring. So I didn't want to make it too thin at this point just in case the end result gave me a rattle which was too thin. So when it came to actually cutting the rings, I have to admit that I struggled quite a bit with this tool. I had watched some videos on how to do it, but not being an experienced turner, I think my kind of instincts for this aren't quite honed in yet. I found it quite difficult to get the right angle of the tool and then the right angle of cut. As you can see, I kind of got a couple of catches here with the tool. So ultimately this resulted in I think too much pressure on the piece. I had some smoke coming off of the off of the wood at one point. Um, I mean, I got there in the end. I got the the rings cut, and the end result wasn't too bad. But yeah, it it wasn't as straightforward as I thought it was going to be going in, and it's something that I think I'm going to have to certainly practice a bit more going forward. So when the rings were almost cut, I started sanding the outside to get them as smooth as possible, as once the rings have been detached from the spindle, it's going to be quite hard to properly sand them down. They'll still need some hand sanding once I'm finished, but the outside has got most of the sanding work done. I apologise for the lack of focus in this shot. I didn't realise that the camera was so out of focus when I was filming this part, so we don't get a brilliant view of the first ring coming off, unfortunately.
So with the first ring detached, I taped it to the main body of the rattle so that as I was cutting through the remaining two rings, the one that's already detached wouldn't get in the way. Once the three rings were cut, I then concentrated on removing the excess material from the spindle and getting the kind of main body of the rattle all smoothed off. Almost there with the rattle, it's only about halfway. I'm pretty happy with how the captive rings have turned out. I made a bit of a mistake on the third ring in that I put probably, I wouldn't say too much pressure, but more pressure on the tool than I had with the other two, which has resulted in a smaller ring. And that also meant that I ended up cutting out more of the spindle material at the same time. So I've ended up tapering the spindle down and we've got a bit of a, I don't know what the technical term for this is on the end, but a bit of a, a ball. So I'm going to be making this end of the rattle slightly uh, thinner than this end. So this end will be one and a half inches and this end is two. So it will have a bit of a tapered look to it, which I know a baby's not going to care about, but at least from my perspective, I think it'll look a bit more interesting. So. I just need to get the ends finished and get the whole thing sanded. For the insides of the rings, I'm going to be attaching some sandpaper to the spindle of the rattle, so then when the main piece is turning, I can sand off the insides of the rings. The outsides of them are nice and smooth, but I'll give them a little bit of a touch up hand sanding afterwards. So almost there, and I'm going to get on with the rest of the rattle. When I first attached the sandpaper to the spindle of the rattle, I made a poor choice of paper. I went with, I think it was 600 grit to begin with, and this just wasn't taking off enough material. The insides of the rings were quite rough from where they'd been cut out, so I took that off and went back to 120 grit, got them into a more kind of reasonable shape on the inside, and then swapped back to some higher grit paper to smooth them out. I could then move on to kind of finishing off the ends. The sort of shorter end, I initially was going to just have a bit of a ball on the end, but it ended up turning into something which more resembles a thistle head, and which would have worked out great if my cousin was Scottish, but unfortunately he isn't, so I'm still fairly happy with it. And I went for a more kind of standard rounded over um, circle at the other end. At this point the rattle was almost ready to take off the lathe so I just gave it a final sanding and then I could start getting the kind of waste ends chopped off. I just used the bandsaw to get the majority of the waste off and then finished off on the belt sander to get rid of the kind of traces of tenons which were left on the top and bottom of the rattle. And then once I'd got rid of that I finished the whole thing off with a 240 grit sanding pad just to kind of ease off any edges and get rid of the last couple of sort of major tool marks which were on the piece. I used mineral oil to finish the piece off. Uh, it's completely food safe and it brings out a nice kind of golden colour in the beach which I really like. 
I put three coats on in total and sanded between coats with 240 grit sandpaper. So that's the rattle all finished. I'm pretty happy of how this one has turned out. There's definitely some room for improvement on the rings, but considering it was the first time that I used the captive ring tool, I don't want to be too hard on myself. And at least by my standards, these rings are, they've turned out pretty nice. So all in all, this is a nice little rattle. I'm going to get it over to my cousin's son as soon as we're able to actually go out and visit other people again, which should hopefully be in the next couple of weeks, which will be great. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It would really help me out. And if you've got any questions or feedback at all on this project, drop a comment on the video and I'll reply to you as soon as possible. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.